Hello everyone, what's up? What is going on? I am out in the Jeep, out and about. I was uh, <clears throat> looking at, looking through the comments last night of, of some of the videos and it was pretty cool. I, I really enjoy reading your guys' comments because some of you guys are, are actually saying how you like the videos, some people are asking questions, it's just, it's pretty cool. So I try and respond to uh, the ones I can. What I've noticed is, you know, a lot of you guys actually enjoy the Grom videos and some for different reasons, right? Some some are like me, that's kind of cool, just relaxing, feel like you're, you're on a little, you know, whatever, a little adventure. Some people, you know, are really into bikes, so they enjoy the Grom, like kind of the moto vlog type stuff. But every time I ride it, it's, it's, become a big big issue that I'm just way too heavy for the suspension you know and long story short I, ne I need to upgrade it somehow now I think I can upgrade the front end by just adding springs but that you know it requires you to take the forks apart take out the old springs put in the new springs you know refill the oil there's a lot that goes into it rather than just like the rear spring where you could or the rear shock you could just change the coil over thailand made um shocks for the back because they're there's they're really inexpensive in comparison to like olin's or race tech or the man in the box one you know there, there's those you're looking at five six hundred dollars and that's a lot. I mean, I'm not going to be, you know, tripling this thing out of the Vanheim Stadium or anything like that. I'm not doing double jumps with it. But I, just, I need to support my weight without, without bouncing me around. So that's where I'm going right now. I'm going to go check out this place where I can maybe go talk to some people. Maybe put hands on some of these things. Check it out. And hopefully I can find something that's inexpensive that will work out the way I want. All right. Well, I just, I just left the place. I'm just sitting outside. It was... um. It was that same place I had ordered the parts from before that I had talked about in one of the early Grom videos. It's called Steady Garage. I had called him and said, hey, do you have like a storefront? He's like, well, kind of, you know, come down and uh, if you want, obviously it's supposed to be like an online thing, but since it was only about a half an hour from my house, he's like, come on down, I'll talk to you. And I told him, I'm like, hey, look, I'm, you know, I'm a big guy, I need I need a shock, but I don't want to spend an arm and a leg like on an Olin's, which is like 500 bucks. And he, and he showed me a couple things that he had. He's like, hey, this, you know, this is a really good shock here. It was like a hundred and, hundred and something dollars less expensive than the Olin's, which, you know, it's not, it's, it's a big name, but it's not necessarily the best shock. But he's like, this is a really good shock. And he had a spring rate for my weight. He's like, now you're gonna put this on, you're gonna love it, but it's gonna make the front end feel even even worse. I didn't want I didn't want to spend the money for a whole kit for the front end. I I really just wanted to add springs to it, which I gotta I gotta look like maybe on online or something to see how difficult that is. I've never done that before, but anyway, I'm gonna go home now and I'm gonna have some fun. I'm gonna put the shock on. And I got some foot pegs that I've wanted forever and everybody's been out of stock. I'll show you guys the foot pegs when we get home. Made it back home. I'm in the garage. So, yeah, I don't have like nice clothes or anything, but I do switch out of like my, <laughs> my like white shirt. And, you know, sometimes I switch shorts and shoes because when I'm out here, I'm rolling around on the ground. I'll wipe, you know, my hands on my shirt maybe. And like I said, it's not like I'm trying to protect nice clothes, but I try not to, you know, ruin everything that I do have. I'm a t I'm a t-shirt guy. T-shirt and jeans, you know, shorts, tennis shoes. Uh, not too fancy. Like to keep my look at my hair is all slicked back. Woo! Like to keep my my you know hats clean and other than the ones that are like all sweaty so I switch out my hat. I got already got my other, these are my glasses that stay in the garage. They're actually safety glasses from work and they're tinted because you know, uh, the whole squinting thing, remember, that's gonna come into play. Let me show you real quick what I got. They actually had the pegs that I've been, I've been wanting for a long time. They were out of stock everywhere I looked and then I couldn't find them. So they're like platforms. I put the same style peg on my, my 450 when I had it. And it, it just, with having a big foot, it gives me a lot more comfort and it feels like you're almost like on platforms. So these are really lightweight, billet aluminum. Um, so it's like a, a square to put your, you know, you put your foot on like this instead of, they're basically like rubbery and round. 
I don't know. Hopefully they, they feel as good as I, I anticipate. I got those. And then here's the shock I ended up getting. It's called Racing Brothers. Now I looked it up. I couldn't find anything, but um, he says that they're they're good. They're they're really good. Um, I mean, if it, if it's anything by the quality of the build, the quality of the build looks really good. I mean, they've got two little uh, adjusters here for the for the preload rings. You look for details and things like that. You know, some major manufacturers won't provide you with a tool to put in the hole and adjust these. You know, people use a hammer and a punch to move these around and mar them all up. Or you try and find your own punch or grind it that'll fit. It came with two of them to make the adjustment. So it's got high speed compression, low speed compression, and slow rebound compression. It's got a, a rubber bump stop in there. This, this uh, spring is rated for 240 pounds plus, which is me. And like I said, the quality of it, it looks, it looks good. I mean, it looks good. Color's a little whack, uh, turquoise, but hey, I'm not worried about that. And it's got a, you know, remote reservoir. So I'm gonna change my clothes. I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna have to hang the bike because I have to, you know, take the other shock off. I'll try and get a little bit of it in there, but I'll uh, show you guys the end result for sure. Racing Brothers Chicane is what this one's called. All right, you guys, I figured I would show you um, at least changing one of these foot pegs out. You know, it's like little things like this are fairly easy. It's got a, a single pin going through that's held on by a cotter, cotter pin over here, and it's got a spring in the middle and a washer down here, so I guess we're gonna take, bend the ears back on the, on the cotter key, and the thing did come with a, a new cotter key for each side. So squeeze it as straight as you can, and then you, if you can't push it through, just grab it on the other side and pull it because it'll, it'll straighten out. That's what it looks like. If you don't know what a cotter key is, it. It goes through and then you spread the end out instead of using any kind of uh, nut or bolt. Push the pin out, kind of put your finger, I don't know, you know, sometimes these springs like this can actually get away from you. You gotta be careful. So that's what the stock one looks like. Just a big fat rubber thingy, you know? And then here's the aftermarket one. So I'm gonna reuse the same spring. We'll make sure that there's a hole in here that the other side of the spring actually goes in. You'll have to work it around. Here we go. There's that. I haven't put my foot on it before I see how I like it. Oh yeah. Oh, that's much better. It's like a it's like a platform now. Plus it grips. You know, these got these round pieces on here instead of just this this rubber. You know, this is almost like round. It's rounded. Just big fat, look at this, rubber piece. Doesn't give you a whole lot of feeling of security. This being flat is exactly that feeling I had on my on my 450. So you would put the um, put the washer back on the bottom. You can reuse this one if you want. These are reusable, but it did come with two new ones, so. Let's push it back through. One, one side is usually longer than the other for you to start the bend. So you hold it in place. And then if you use a screwdriver, it's easier, but this one's pretty flexible. And you just bend both tabs over, and that's it. So now I've got a Got a new nice platform. It's using the, all the stock parts. Pretty nice. Billet aluminum. I like it. It's a lot more comfortable for these big old feetsies. All right, you guys, so you're gonna have to excuse all the sweat. So what I do, man, I sweat like a meatloaf. It is what it is. Woo! All right, so what I've done is I've taken off the side panel. I've taken off the chain guard, the seat, and I've engineered a lift here. I'm gonna show you, this is a, uh, specially engineered here. This is a special tool, which is a pipe that's going, to, it's a, what is that? An inch and three quarter chromoly 4130 pipe that I had in the garage um, <clears throat> that I used for making uh, bumpers, I think. 
and I've strapped it to the top of the Jeep and I've put a ratchet strap on and then attach it to the frame to give myself some lift off the uh, the back tire here. I've also got the front handlebar attached to the rock slider on the Jeep and then the foot peg on this side is going over and it is attached to that car right there. So I just find, find something. I was going to hang it from the garage but this is just the setup that I've got now. So it's a uh, it should be free. Yeah, so the tire's just free. Hopefully you guys can see. Oh man, I'm literally like dripping sweat. It's what I do. Right about there. Okay, so again, it took off the side panel. It's just a couple of screws here, some here. It comes off the chain guard. And then you've got a bolt at the bottom of the, of the rear shock. And then right up in here, you've got the top bolt. I think I'll probably try and get the bottom bolt. So it looks like it's um, a 14 millimeter on one side and a 17 millimeter on the other side. I've got a, I've got a um, extension on here that if you push all the way down, it's rigid, but if you pop it out to here, it gives you a little bit of a pivot because this, this rear foot peg is a little bit in the way if I was to, um, to hold it that way. So we'll try and break it free <clears throat> there we go wasn't too bad the bottom one wasn't too bad I'm gonna leave the nut on but just uh, hand tight and then this one up here looks like I might have to go I was using a long socket there I'm gonna go with the short 14 now I'll tell you the, the just that little bit of pivot there makes makes all the difference in the world sometimes on trying to get into some of these spots. Okay, so that's easy enough to get in there, but now the wrench. The wrench might need to go in from the top. You gotta be careful that that linkage of some kind right there. Your um, batteries right here, the positive sides here, negative sides here, you can hit this on the negative side, it's not going to spark, but if you hit that positive side, you're going to get an arc. <clears throat> All right, I just barely got it. You probably take off the other side and go in with, a, with an opposing ratchet and get straight in there. I was just able to get the, bo the uh, box in on. It's got a bit of a self-locking nut on there. Kind of a cheap one. It's not a nylock. Um, I don't know if you can see that in there. It's a, ch it's a cheaper method. Alright, so wiggle the shock to make sure that there's no Preload, like I said, I just barely have the weight off the bike, and it's perfect, perfect amount. You don't need to crank it like way up off the ground. And there's the shock. Look at that travel. It's only right there, that little bit. Not very much. All right. Now we're going to take the new one, and it might help to got the license plate in the way. Hopefully this uh, reservoir doesn't hit the license plate because it's not in the stock position. So to help you hold it, you could just put the bottom one in. Okay, so there's that. Can you see the shock in there now? <clears throat> so I've got um, I got them both pushed back through. You're going to tighten these up and then uh, we'll put everything back on. Actually, I won't put it on yet. I'll put the seat back on and then what we're going to do is have to set the preload of the bike and I'll have to read what they say, but basically you, you find a place maybe from the tire to part of the fender and you, you get that measurement. Then you sit on it and take the measurement again and depending on your weight, uh, it, should only, it should only compress so far and then you, you'll spin these rings to compress it to make sure when you sit on it, it only goes that far then your preload set then you ride it and you can start setting your your compression and rebound adjustments what we're looking for here is about 10 
to 20 millimeters. So from full full height to full rider weight. Definitely, oh, it's a huge difference. I mean, it's hard to tell with this front end moving so much, but look at the front end. But that's, I mean, if I sit way back, man, it's so much better. So much better. And you can actually hear this the rebound compression valving working in there now. But the spring is just, it's key. The preload is key to your weight. So that feels pretty good right there. What I'll do is, anytime you do something like this, you want to shake it down. You know, you want to go out, ride it, ride it around, put some miles on to heat it up. You know, put some, uh, go through some bumps and stuff, some turns, see how it feels. Once you get that preload set, then you'll start riding to see if you like the way it feels. And then you can tweak with the compression and the re rebound adjustments. If you don't know what you're doing, just read up on it. Uh, it's basically, in a nutshell, it'll help when it goes down and compresses. And then how fast it releases, kind of putting some, some hydraulic pressure against... Because if you didn't have any at all and you compress a spring, what's it going to do when it unloads? Boing! It's going to, you know, give you that, that kick feel, which you don't want. So you want to be able to compress something and then hydraulically, uh, you know, you can control the speed at which it unloads. And that makes all the difference over bumps. It makes all the difference in cornering, you know, is how, how you kind of load the bike into the corner. And then as you come off the corner and you straighten up, how quick or how slow it actually rises back up to ride height. Well, that was fun. I love doing this kind of stuff. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope I was able to get enough uh, tech, technical type stuff in there. Just, you know, it's pretty easy. There's not a whole lot of like real tech stuff. All I gotta do is put back on the chain guard, put back on this side thing, and then, you know, I'll, I don't know if I'll take it out right now because it it's still really hot out right now, but take it out, have some fun with it. The next thing will be Probably, I gotta do some research, but probably just putting some springs in these forks because it's that you can get those for about a hundred bucks. Some good, like race tech springs, something that's stiffer, and then you know, hopefully, count on the fact that the valving in these forks will be good enough. If you go with a kit, it's it's an ordeal. You gotta take it completely apart, you have to take the fork tubes completely apart. Plus, it's expensive, it's like three times the cost of just springs. It's important. I mean, with the feel of this back, it feels so good. It feels it feels really, really good. Right in the old wheelhouse. I got the spring for my weight limit. So if someone else hops on here that's half my weight, it's gonna feel like a like a concrete block. <laughs> All right guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. A little Grom Tech, if that's what you can call it. We'll see you guys next time.